Did I tell you what I messed up in the last podcast? Uh, when we were talking about all the, th- like, how, you know, this is how the channel's changing. This is the good things. This is the bad things. Did I tell you the one thing I forgot to fucking include? What? The fact that you, at some point, were smart enough to be like, I need, I think we should have our names on the videos. And I never mentioned that. Well, I think you have mentioned something like that. Yeah. Well, so that's a carryover from that vlog, if you ended up watching that. It's a carryover part for... Carry me over. Carry on my Warren rascal. Um, oh, I guess I should model the um, the shirt. There you go. Y'all see the Robocop right there? You can't Funny see his ass. ass. You can't see his butt, no. It's right there. See so. you. It's Razcast. Episode 13? Yeah, 13. 13! Lucky number 13. This wasn't supposed to be the 13th one, this was supposed to be like number 10, but we had a bunch of random Razzcasts that happened and, since. And you know what they say, this is my 13th reason. Anyways. Blind 182! We saw him. He's here physically. I'm here physically. Um, we're just gonna talk about the show. It's probably not gonna be super long, because it's not like My Chemical Romance where I saw them twice and you saw them once and we had to recount yeah. all of that. Um, pew, pew, pew. But yeah, so they were here at the LCA with Beauty School Dropout. We did not see them. No. We were too busy eating and then in the merch line. And then Turnstile, which I love, and then Blink. Uh, so we're going to talk about it. Um, initial review, how'd you feel of the show? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. The the show itself was definitely a thumbs up. The experience was two thumbs down. And I'll get into my boomer talk in a minute. Um, yeah, this is the fourth time I've seen them. This will be my fourth as well. Cause you did you see them before? I saw them. So I saw them with you back yes. in 2011. Mm-hmm. And then I saw them with you again in 2016. Yes. And then I saw them myself in 2016. Okay. And then. This will be my first time since seeing them. So you saw them when they... Was it the all-time low Day to Remember tour that you saw them? Yeah. Okay. I got you. I got to see them, the wonderful tour with them and Lil Wayne. Uh, with Jay. <laughs> so I saw... So this is my fourth time. So this is my second time seeing with Tom. As well as you. Yeah. Um. I'll be honest. I'm not a... I don't hate Matt Skiba. I don't love him, you know, he seems like a nice guy. The energy is just not there when he was there on tour. Mm-hmm. I felt like it was just Mark trying his hardest to be funny and then, which he's fine, like he's not the issue, it's just he's trying his hardest to be funny and it just, it didn't work because Matt was just kind of there. Um, And then the first time we saw them, Tom was sick, but I mean, he was still doing his thing. So this was kind of the first time we actually got to see the full group not sick in its glory. Um, Again, I wish I could have viewed most of this because literally we get there, we're at like this bar section. So we had like a table and seats and we weren't really that high up from the row in front of us. Usually you go to a concert venue, it's kind of like they do enough they do enough where that you don't have to worry about when you stand up. You can at least stay over their head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right when we got there, I'm like, no one was in front of us. And I immediately got nervous because I'm like, this always happens to me. Turnstile finish, which I want to talk about Turnstile for like a few minutes. We won't get too much because I know you're not as big into them as I am. I want to talk about them a little bit. Um, so they all start showing up right before Blink. The moment the show starts, they all stand up. Whatever, right? I'm like, great, this is whatever. It's a concert, they're gonna do that. That wasn't the problem. The problem was the amount of movement and the amount of them talking to each other. Well, you had a different issue. So I had three girls by me. You just had this tall ass guy who didn't decide if he wanted to sit or stand the entire night. Yeah. So that was an issue, yeah. And then me, I had three girls who, insert 
Scarlett Johansson from Marriage Story, because this was them the whole night. They would not shut up. They kept talking to each other. Every time they talked to each other, they were in my view. Um, the one in the middle is one of the most hated people in my life. Like, I was stressed out by her the entire night. I couldn't, I was bothered so much. And then, literally, <laughs> the two people next to us, they left, uh, like, five songs early. Right? Let me see. I can actually give you an exact amount. Yeah. Yeah, five, five songs because, yeah, Ghost on the Dance Floor. So they left five songs early. They looked over at me and they go, they kind of gave me a look like they knew I was annoyed the whole night. Mm -hmm. And they go, you can move over because we're leaving. So we move over, right? So we move over. for No, it was just that song. We move over for one song. Literally the moment... What's My Age Again started, the two people who were sitting the entire show stood up in front of us. And I was like... <laughs> you were seated the whole show. I was... Here's the thing. I think I'm glad I had a little bit of time in that part. And they weren't moving as much. But I couldn't... You, I gave a lot of props to because I was not going to try and do what you were doing the entire night. Like, you were, like, standing, like, we're in, like, kind of similar chairs right now. He was standing, like, on the chair looking over. I would not have the drive to do that. I get why you did it, though, but it was still, like, this is so frustrating. I cannot believe how annoying it was. Um, it didn't fully ruin my experience because I do have highlights. I do, obviously, that was part of the, like, annoyance of it. It's, like, I feel like I can... I, it's always rare for me to go to a concert where I have, like, a good experience from that perspective. Um, I was able to see Turnstile the entire time, so, but anyways, Boomer rant over. Um, I, Jade knows about Turnstile a lot because of me. I knew I was excited for Eric to hear them. Um, they sounded amazing. They sounded so good. I would love to see them solo on tour. But the energy they brought was great. Again, we didn't see Beauty School Dropout because I wanted Kenny Hoopla to be an opener for us. But unfortunately, he was not, which made me very, very sad. Um, but yeah, Turnstile was great. They did a lot of their new albums, some older stuff. And um, I just thought their set was really fascinating. I love how everyone kind of had their moment. They sounded great. Um, first time listener, how'd you feel? They were good. They were good? Yeah. Okay. I really don't have much to say. It's true. So, I guess we'll break down the show as a whole first, and then, like, in terms of the look, and then maybe we can go through songs. So, how'd you feel about the stage design? Because it was very different from... It's very different from what they're normally... Because... Mm -hmm. They've always been an amphitheater. They've always been a type them. of amphitheater with, like, lawn seats yeah. and things like that. Even when I saw them back in 2016, it was, like, a state fair stage in a sense. Okay. <laughs> um, but it was still outside. And so it was enough room for them to be like, okay, big enough like this. Or instead now it was a small square design with a little space, just just enough for them to move around when needed. Yeah. Um, or in Travis's case, in the air. It's true. I did like the stage design though, because even though there's three of them, it felt, I like when stages aren't rectangles. And they more so come out towards the people mm -hmm. because then it's instead of them going like this, this, right here, it's like they can come out here and they're able to like go, like it felt more fluid. They definitely looked as good as they did. I mean, they, they were fine in 2016. I don't think 2016 they were like terrible with Matt Skiba. They still sounded fine. But I did not feel like there was this much energy since we first saw them. Mm -hmm. And obviously we know why. Because <laughs> of Tom. Um, which was really the only reason I wanted to go see him again. I was kind of over them after the last time. And I was like, okay, this is kind of sad. But I think with Mark's energy now after getting over cancer, thankfully. And, you know, Travis always will show up. Obviously he got injured, but he'll still be like, fuck it, let's go. And then Tom was Tom. Tom was Tom. Tom was Tom, so I was just happy that we got him back. I liked how once in a while they would have, like, some cool, like, inflatable. So they had, like, the um, ambulance, they had the bunny, they had 
That might have been it. They had a couple things. They had a couple different things. They had like one big screen, like rectangle on each side. They had the screen, like you said, in the middle. Sometimes it looked like it was lifted up because they had yeah. Travis go up. They had their logo on the stage. Yeah, and it was lighting up. It was lighting up. So the LED lights on that. There was some pyrotechnics. Yes. Um, nothing crazy, though. Um, no, it was very quaint, which was cool. No flaming fuck. No flaming fuck, which was sad. But I did like how, uh, and you know, this isn't one of those, like, it's not like, oh, shit, that's so original. But I liked how the visuals went with the song. So it was either, like, like feeling this, it was the music video of all the people in, like, the clothes, and they're yeah. getting naked in the video. Rock show, they just did the Take Off Your Pants logos. Yeah. So it, it changed for whatever song it was. Um... And some of them were just kind of general, too. Like, sometimes it was just very much, like... They did a lot of graffiti stuff, too. Yeah. Um, and then... The only one that really didn't have anything going on for it was because, you know, it was at, not added to the set list, but, you know, it oh. was just them doing it. it. was not now. Tour debut! Tour debut! We're looking at it. It's first time live since 2017 and first time with Tom since 2013. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> At least we got something like that, which yeah. I'll get into my main complaint with the show, but it's more of a just personal thing, but that was cool that we got a little bit of a set list change, so, um, but okay, so I guess I just wanted to get that out of the way. I mean, we can still talk about the visuals, but let's just get into it, so. I mean, if, yeah, we bring, get up to a song, we're like, okay, visually. Well, that is true. So, obviously, we have the, you know, the great opener, 20, uh, you know, 2001 Space Odyssey intro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting us out there. Um, good way to open it. You know, it's funny because it's just, again, it's their whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Anthem Part 2, which I think was a really solid opener. Yeah, I can agree with that. I like that that was, that's a fun song, I feel like, especially with this set list, with this, you know, with them kind of having their reunion again. Mm -hmm. Again, I will say off top, we're going to make probably jokes about this a lot, and I say this with all the love, Tom can't sing, and yet I love it. He has so much more personality. I think there's so much more intrigue when he sings, especially especially when he did the two, the two California, California songs, songs, which sure. I was very like, okay, this sounds yeah. a lot cooler. Again, it's the weird, it's just his voice doesn't sound good, and that's what makes it unique, especially Cynical. He sounded great on Cynical to me. Um, so yeah, Anthem Part 2, Rock Show, of course. You, you go into that straight away. Um... Then we got our joke song, our first one. Family Reunion, Family which reunion. the old joke songs it was nice to hear. The new joke songs, I was like, ugh. Like, they didn't play the new joke songs. Like, from California, yeah. like, Built This Pool and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think we need these kind of songs anymore at this age. But yeah. they did the old ones, which is fine. I liked all the different signs for that, too. Because mm -hmm. remember, that, that was the whole joke, too. After the second song, they both were like, this is the most effort we put into... Um, the song, so now we could just suck the rest of the night, and that's when they went to family reunion. <laughs> yeah, and of course, next song they always start out when it comes to Man Overboard. They always are like it's a bass solo time. It is, which that's was nice. nice to hear that too. Yeah, it was nice to hear Man Overboard because I know they. I could look into this maybe once, like you know, once maybe he's going talking about something. I can look into maybe the last time they played it, but I don't remember them playing it at all. Maybe since we saw them the first time. I Well, they played it when I saw them in 2016 as well. Okay, so, so maybe they did they, then. Yeah, because the show with Little Wayne was weird. That's all. Oh, yeah, because that was just Enema of the State. Yeah. With some extra songs. Um, Feeling This. Feeling This, which I, as you know, if you go on my solo channel, I did a classic review I love. Self-titled, untitled, whatever. Um, Feeling This was great. Again, the visuals were cool. Reckless Abandon. Um, that in the way you sang it at the beginning... How slow. Come on, man. I'm trying to remember when they did the jokes, too. There was a lot they of They did wonderful like, a jokes. lot of them between them, you can tell. Good improv skills. They did it <laughs> did that point between Feel This and a Reckless Abandon. There was a bit of... Was that, was that the joke about Australia? Uh, no, I think that was like two songs before that. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so Reckless Abandon. That intro was my only problem with that with Tom. But then the song sounded fine afterwards. Yeah. I'll say that. Um, but, like, you can slow down an intro of a song like that. But, like, 
you can't have the same like guitar speed at the same time then for the intro. You need to either slow that down too, or like do something really unique where it's not the same. Yeah, I don't know. I understand. Um, not now, which we brought up was then coming up. Mm -hmm. um, I can look to see here. I was gonna say I'll let you rant real quick, but um, <laughs> I'm because <laughs> I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna see what the set list was for on um, the show, uh, Chicago for, show for Chicago because yeah, well, they apparently hated Chicago for some reason. Oh yeah, they shot on Chicago like that entire. Don't leave me is what they did in dedication. Oh, they dedicated Cynical too. The Matt Skiba. The Matt Skiba. Um, yeah, so it seems like it was. Yeah, it seems like that was the song that was. Oh, and then, and then the first tour they kind of changed up the the yeah. So "Don't Leave Me" seems like the song that was first time with Tom since two thousand nine. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so I think it, it must have been yeah. So that's what it was. So "Not Now" was in replacement of "Don't Leave Me." Um, Let's get it to this our first neighborhood song of the night, which we're pro neighborhoods here. We are very pro neighborhoods. <laughs> um, we got up all night, which. I love the visuals of this album. I love kind of like the cool stencil art. This is again, I this when this song came on, I was already in like the like most annoyed state I was in, so I'm like I need to get a little bit of enjoyment out of this. Yeah. Cuz we I love neighborhoods. I know you do too. No, yeah, hearing it I was just like cuz again, 2011 was when neighborhoods was coming out. We saw them for the first time and we're like Oh wow! Because at the time the album wasn't dropped yet, it was like oh, yeah. a week before the album actually dropped that we saw them. So they were just singing songs off the album, but weren't even out. Yeah, Gary, <laughs> it's a fun song. It's from like their joke songs, but also like you know, let's be real for a second type of thing. Yeah, uh, dump weed. I would have been more interested if that was earlier. I know it's the opener of that album, and it's you can only do like one certain kind of opener. I would have loved to see that be the song after Family Reunion, because I feel like you open with the kind of two big starters, you do Family Reunion, and then Dumpweed, just the, the, dun, da, 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 like that feels like kind of like that opening vibe, but I, I do like the song. I ain't that cool, little fucking hit. Edging, baby. Edging, which is the only new song they played, and probably the only new song we're going to hear for the next three years. Um, this album's just never going to come out. But you have to start playing all along, you know. <laughs> that was the plan. It was just it was, they're just gonna do edging. That's it. That's the album. That's the album. Uh, he, I know, is very much. It didn't sound terrible live. I just hate the way that song sounds. I think it's very overproduced. Especially the chorus is the part of the song. I think. Is I bad. mean, but you gotta. Admit. The hooks are good, or the the verses are okay. I like the verses. Yeah, I love. I love Tom individually on that song. Oh, I Tom, know. I think, is the shining star. I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, speaking of Tom, we, they got so hyped because they were just like, Tom, let's talk about aliens. And then he was like, hell yeah, with his To The Star shirt on. Yeah. So aliens is aliens exist. That was good visuals, too. The aliens exist. I yes, felt like I the agree. rabbit in the ship with the aliens. I agree. Um, Cynical. Cynical. One of the few great songs off of California. And the first California song we get, which is really one of only two songs from the Matt Skiba era we heard. Yeah. We'll we see what happens. We don't get anything from Nine, spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, for better or for worse, we'll say. Yeah. Um, I will say, again, when Mark started it, I was kind of like, oh, okay. But then once it... Once they got going, I was like, fuck, this song is rad. And then once Tom came in and, like, again, just his attitude singing it, what, stop? I was like, okay, I love, like, it fits so good with Tom's voice. Like, no. Tom sounded great on it. I, I've told this to him previously, but, you know, we talk about California, and I'm just like, these, so these songs exist well enough that you could just take Matt out and insert Tom in, and you could kind of tell there's a difference but not really and I mean it kind of proves that point here with these shows with them playing it because I'm not saying that nine songs wouldn't work with Tom but it'd be very interesting to hear them and see what would be changed because well, uh, yeah because we talked about how California felt more like hey we want your ideas but we're gonna kind of make a certain kind of album nine was like okay 
will let you do some stuff that you want to do, Max Kiba. So I do understand that where you can listen to California and you could definitely just take him out and plug in Tom and yeah. it just, it feels, you know. It was interesting though, because I, I pointed this out, um, when they played Cynical, the color scheme on the monitors oh, was yeah. more nine aesthetically. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if, if they do decide to do any songs from nine, uh, they will just use that aesthetic, but here's the saying, they will never will. These neck, these two songs should have been in a different order, because then we get Happy Holidays, You Bastard, which I think from Cynical to this, I feel like there needed to be like a better, here's a quick song, okay, here's a song. Okay, here's a quick joke set. Like, I think it needed to be, like, it felt like it was, like, cynical, wake me up before it's Christmas Eve, and, and then it's over. It's like, yeah, it's, switch it up a little bit, but... I feel like it, if, if we were to pick a nine song, Generational Divide would probably have been good there. Oh, that would have been sick. See, and that's, again, I'll get into my main problem once we get to the end, but that is a good point to bring up. But yeah, so Happy Holidays, you bastards. Stay together for the kids, which... That you know, was some good visuals on that. Yeah. Uh, and they actually sounded pretty good. Yeah. I was very, again, that's one of those songs where, like, as an adult, you listen to it and you're like, okay, this is just that sappy pop punk. But again, when they used to make those kind of songs, earlier in their career, there still was that personality and that, like, no, like, that you sh that I could take it seriously. I think there's some more schmaltzier songs on their newer albums that are like, I'm, yeah, I'm not. And I think I'm it's the way it's, I think it's the way it's produced, too. Mm -hmm. Um... Then we get to a double treat for me, Always and Down, yeah. which I thought was a great one-two punch. A nice, nice steady, love. Yeah. steady, untitled love. Yeah, so Always and Down, I, I love the visuals for that as well. Um, uh, yeah, because Always was this weird like spaceship thing in the background. Oh yeah, that looked like a penis. Yeah, there was a penis. It was the two planets and then the spaceship yeah, was the going through it. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, Down I think is a great song. Um, Bored to Death. Our second California, our last California song. Yes, our, our second and last. When California first came out, I think I just had that mentality of, like, me really liking it. You know, it was just one of those, like, oh my god, blink, and then, like, you kind of sit with it and you go, okay. It's fine. It's fine. And, like, I think Bored to Death is one of those songs where the more I hear it, I just go, oh, man, I, yeah, it's not the most amazing song He's ever. bored to death. I, I mean, that, that was the whole joke when it came out, too, mm -hmm. so... But yeah, he did. Visually was really cool. Visually was, a bunch was cool. Of graffiti, and they were on top of each other with different song lyrics and different ideas yeah. and things like that. But then again, the whole whoa, whoa, like that's that yeah, whole Tom, album. Tom really couldn't save the woes during yeah. the live performance. No, um, he see that should have been a song he changed the lyrics about, like fucking his dad or something like that. That would have made it better. Yeah, they could have played No Future. Yikes. <laughs> 19, I Miss You, which was, I think, the peak of my annoyance from the girl in the middle. I was stunned at whatever the hell she was doing. Like, her legs were jello. She was like, looked like she was going to shoot off into space like a rocket ship. Like, she was like, this the whole time. Looking like, hey, 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 come on, the time. Um, the Weeknd said it's his favorite song, but it's the best written song of all time. Interesting. So how do we feel about that? Um, I can Let's just make that a part of the conversation. <laughs> well, if we're going to talk about that, uh, I definitely can see where the weekend gets ideas from. Kind of his, e yeah, his emo-ish yeah. vibe. Um, coming from someone that doesn't really listen to the weekend, but, you know, had... From what you've heard. Uh, from the experience I had with his, uh, his horror oh, night's house. Oh, his horror night's house. <laughs> his horror night's house, yeah. Um... You get some ideas from that, uh, but going to I Miss You live, um, it sounds really well live. Tom, Tom, of course, lets the meme take over. Yes, he does. He loves that he fucking has. meme. He's a big fan. Um, Adam Song, which I love Adam Song. Adam Song is I'm happy excellent. they played it. They yeah, haven't played it. That's a song it. that they don't play much, and now it feels like it's going to be a staple for this tour, which is excellent. Yeah, I love... Because we love Suicide. No, we don't. We, no. I love that song, though, because, again, I think we talk about I Miss You, and I Miss You the way it's written. Like, obviously, the hook is very, you know, generic, and it's, you know, don't wait, you know. But just the way they write that song and how, like, 
it feels very poetic, but then there's like these random parts that kind of you're not expecting in the sun. Like it's a it's an interesting combination of like metaphor and poetry. Well, I mean, it's the idea of like when you're giving up on everything and you want to just end it. You know, the littlest things even get to you. Exactly. Like that like a lot of people make fun of the apple juice line in a sense, but like it's it's, it's that something it's that's like it triggers you and you're like yeah. nope that's it that's what did it that's Goodbye. why yeah that's why when they used to make songs like that back in the day it's just it's those weird quirky details where it's like it just adds to it and you're just like you know so now we get to the point where i get super happy and then it goes away almost immediately uh we get ghost on the dance floor which to me was probably my favorite song of the night i I um, actually would probably agree with you. I, because... Tom sounded excellent on it. Yeah, of course, he had to do his whole, you're too old to do this, Tom. You're going to split your skinny jeans doing your, like, legs that go out to here. You know? Like, I'm shocked that Travis probably, like, smacks a drum, like, once he breaks his finger. Yeah. Trav or Tom's over here, like, basically doing this. Nothing happens. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that song, visuals were great. And then, basically, the last kind of, well, actually, I won't say that so then the final song the of final the night, song yeah because that's that was what's my age again it's what's my age again yeah, it's that it's you know this this part we get into like the staple songs i guess these last four songs i think are the four obvious songs that you end the show with so yeah. that's when he goes that's the end of the show this well, is the encore <laughs> because i feel like bands nowadays are like we know we're gonna come back out there's no point to leave and then come back let's just fucking I don't know what started that. I kind of want to go into a history of, like, how the encore started. Because yeah. I would love to see it where... Because, you know, after a show, when the show is officially over, they just turn on the lights and things like that. I yeah. want to know who... Which artist was the one that the lights turned on and they said, you know what, fuck it, we're going to do some more songs. And they just walked out, like, God, with damn. the lights still on, and like, we're still performing, yes. Well, yeah, and they let them know. They're like, this is, we're doing the trick. It's like, that's what you know. The moment the lights don't come on, you just know, I know, you can't trick, it's, you can't trick me. Um, so, yeah, so first date, there's some notes in here. This is, I'll be honest. I kind of think it's funny and fun, but it's goofy, but it's fun when bands do the weird interpolations of shit. And yeah. this is really the only one of the two times what you when yeah. they were doing, you know, some Ramon stuff. Tom was doing the, I, oh, let's go. So stuff like that, I feel like would have been fun. But first date, which if I had to pick like the single of theirs that I think is their best, like their big song, I'd say First Date is probably my favorite of all of them. I think the music video just makes no sense either and I love it. Yeah, First what Date's the, excellent. What the fuck? <laughs> With their characters. Um, all the Small Things is when I went to the bathroom because I'll be honest, All the Small Things is that I mean, song. Yeah, because, you know, when they wrote it, they wrote it as the parody of all the boy band stuff. And it, and, it, and it caught on. on. Yeah. yeah, it caught on because of that. Yeah, actually, the last time I saw them uh, in 2016, they didn't end with "Damn It." Oh, okay. Um, Travis left the stage. <laughs> Mark and Matt were still on there, and they're like, "We can't play anymore. We don't have a drummer." <laughs> oh, so they did all ways to. So they had a, a fan, they said, can you do it? And the fan was like, yeah. And then the fan got on stage and did it. Um, but I was already walking out to my car. I was like, what happened? Like, did something, like, did Travis, like, was there something going on? Uh, or was that like, the, or was they did that on purpose? Like, they wanted someone to come on stage? I don't know, but... Um, Hopefully it wasn't them just being legitimately, like, assholes. Like, I hope Travis wasn't just like, oh, he got, he talked to us. We got, we got a hello, we got, Detroit. We got a hello, Detroit from Travis. He didn't do that to Chicago, apparently. Yeah. So we got a hello, Detroit. And yeah. Mark got, uh, uh, as always, they look like little children when Travis speaks. They're like... <laughs> he speaks. <laughs> he knows how to say words. Meanwhile, they've literally done interviews with him speaking. So it doesn't make yeah. any sense, but whatever. Yeah. It's just weird when he speaks so Can much. Can we go back to Travis Parker being in those uh, Fandango commercials before movies? I don't remember though. Do you not remember those? There no. was the, I mean, there was this, uh, there was just the commercials before getting movies and they were like, movie ticket, oh, it was movietickets.com. Oh, okay. Movietickets.com. I'll have to find that and put it in here. Yeah. Maybe not the video, <laughs> maybe just the screenshot. Quick little snippet of Travis. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, and then that was the show. Obviously, besides my, my normal things I brought up, the only thing I wish is, I just wish this set list would have been maybe a little more like, interesting. I felt like it definitely hit on certain things and I was hoping that with them coming back, maybe, like, I would have loved to hear, you know, since we got a song in October and it's now May, we could have gotten like, this is a, like, imagine it. This is a new song, Tom. You're gonna fucking hate it. Let's go. <laughs> Whatever. One new song. Maybe I would have liked to see... You know, fuck it. If we're gonna go to weird shit, let's play uh, Josie. Yeah, I got everything. Everything's gonna be an all everything. Thing. Let's do some shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, I would have been fascinated to see maybe another nine song. Um, obviously, I don't like Bored to Death. We like Rabbit Hole. That would have been a fun song. That's a more, like, that energy in that song would have been fun to see them doing together. Maybe something from Nine. Um, I would have loved to see maybe my favorite song off of Neighborhoods, After Midnight. That would have been a fun way to slow down the show. Um, I don't think the set list is garbage or anything. Like, I'm not sitting here like, no. oh my god. It just, it got to a point where I'm like, Okay, okay, okay. Like, they did sound great. Like, they actually sounded much better than I was anticipating. It just was, was more like, of a... He was like, I can't wait for turnstiles to be the best sounding thing of the entire show. And I, they said, fuck you. They said, fuck you. Um, no, I had a good time. Like I said, I, I, I'm annoyed and I feel upset. When, when Eric gives me a serious, like, look during the concert, you know that things are weird because he never acts serious like that with me. So he kind of checked in on me during the show when Jade went to the bathroom. Um, but no, other than that, it was fine. I think the merch, I will say, I always shout out merchandise when it's actually, like, cool. And yeah. I actually felt like it was inspired. I will say, suck at every other city, because I think we have the best shirt so far. We'll see how... We didn't see the poster, so, did we? No, we didn't. I don't know if they just... Decided to get rid of the poster idea after two shows. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe they were out of it, or maybe, like... Or was it on, like, the pa the piece of paper? Because they had, like, a piece of paper. Like, you got, yeah. you got, like, the tag that they didn't just have hanging up. So maybe that was part of it. Um, maybe. Or maybe it was outside, because there was one inside and there was one outside duh, for merchandise. Um, so. But yeah. Other than that, it was, it was a good yeah, time. Yeah, Jade wanted the kid shirt. She did. She wanted the teal one. Um, I got this one and I got the gay shirt. Yes. And the guys in front of us laughed. He's like, I want the gay shirt. And they turn around and laughed. I'm like, that's, hey, it's the gay shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so Blink was cool. Like I said, I'm like, my kind of romance was fun because it was the, what is Gerard going to wear and what's the set list? This was, we were both there, we knew what was happening. Um, I just want to know, you know, what it sounds like and, uh, you know, their personalities. That's what we're there for and, well. I'm glad that. I'm glad that Tom is still a child and yes. that Mark is like, why am I dealing with this? I know. He's just like, Jesus Christ, I can't do this. Um, but yeah, it was great. Like, comments to Scoob. Tell us! Are you going to see Blink? Have you seen Blink? Were you in Detroit seeing Blink? Leave all that in the comments below. What's your favorite Blink song? What's your favorite? Yeah, just give us all. Just talk to us about anything Blink related, you know? Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Anything else? I will say I was sad that Travis didn't do, like, a fun, fun floating. He just did a normal float. He said, I float. He's just, he did a normal float. We thought that he was going to have, like, jetpacks come out and go everywhere, and he was going to burn the people underneath him. He could have helped you out. That did it. That is true. That would have been nice. Yeah. Um, toodaloo. Toodaloo. <laughs>